If you've been following this project, you know a friend of mine said if I could drag this Jeep out of the woods, I could have it. Stripped it down, found out the frame was rotten out on it, and the motor was stuck on it. I found another frame for it and got that cleaned up. Now it's time to finish stripping the old one. Well, my curiosity got the better of me and I pulled the head off the motor to see what was going on. So as the transmission fluid in there that I poured in a few weeks ago. The cylinders that had both valves closed aren't terrible, but this one had the intake valve open. I think this might be our offending cylinder. The one with the exhaust valve is similarly crusty. Well, I gave her a good effort, but in the end, I'm not going to use this thing anyway, so I'm just going to call this stuck. For this thing to ever run properly, it's going to need someone to rebuild it, and that person's not going to be me. I've got this big beam in the shop, and I've been wanting to get a chain hoist to hang on it for a while. And this was finally my excuse to do it, but the trolley I got doesn't actually fit the beam, despite being advertised that it would. A normal person would probably just send it back and order one that would fit, but I'm not a normal person. Instead, I just need to make a longer bolt that goes through there and some different spacers. And I think I'm going to use that piece of unknown metal. And I know what you're thinking. Is it a good idea to use a piece of who knows what to make something that I'm going to lift heavy things with? Let's talk about that. A quick test on the bench grinder shows some little fireworks at the ends of the sparks. So this is at least a medium carbon steel. Let's lowball it and say it's 1045. We can look up the tensile strength for 1045. And again, low end, it's about 82,000 PSI. Uh, for those of you that want to work in sensible units, bear with me, because in the end we're just going to come up with a unitless factor. This is going to be 3 inch diameter, so pi r squared, cross-sectional area, 0.518 square inches times our tensile strength gives 42,000 and change pounds. We can do the same math for shear strength, come out with about 30,000 pounds. There are some more complicated forces in play with how this thing gets loaded, but that works out respectively to be about 21 and 15 times the rating on the chain hoist. Yeah, I think I'll trust that as much or more than I would the original one. Still not going to put my fingers under whatever's hanging. Well, let's see what this thing weighs.
There you go, for 72 horsepower, it's 402.6 pounds. Back end's fighting me a little bit more than the front. This shackle, the spring eye broke off completely, but that's why it has the double wrap on it, so if one fails, you can still drive the vehicle. That's not really a problem getting it off. On this side, the head of the little bushing sheared off, so that's stuck. And this bolt does not want to move. I think the last thing I want to say from this frame is the front bumper. And I've got some plans for this part, but we'll set it aside for now. Amazingly enough, the U-bolts on the driver's side front are coming off in one piece. Seriously, you know how to take a tire off, right? Do you really want to watch this? I mean, the only thing that's weird is their left-hand threads, because it's from the 50s. Every time a nut like this one on the tie rod comes loose, it's a pleasant little surprise.
kind of did an initial debulking, degunking. Now that that's done, I want to start pulling this off, try to get the knuckle off. Once I had the wheel off this, it turns out this brake drum, oh, now it's loosened up. There's something dragging in here. I'm gonna try to pull the drum and the hub off together. Hopefully I don't have to cut the drum off like I did on the other side. These early Jeeps came with the drum and hub pressed together from the factory, but this one had the studs replaced at some point, so they're two pieces now. The original drive flange is missing here. I think I'll probably replace it with a set of locking hubs. So one other thing to note before I pull this part, it shouldn't do that. So the spindle came off with the brake plate. There's supposed to be a bronze bushing in there. That's all chewed up. The bronze bushing is stuck on the axle. It's a tight fit, but the axles do actually slide out through the knuckles. So this little tag is supposed to tell what style of joint is in here. I don't think that's going to be real helpful. The bottom kingpin bolts have grease that runs down onto them, so they came out pretty easily. But the top ones fought a lot more, and this one ended up stripping it off. I'm not going to use this bracket. Don't read that stuff, it's really bad for you. These gears so far look pretty good. There's not too much carnage on them. There's a very slight amount of backlash between the ring and pinion. I don't think it's enough to worry about. So far, everything feels pretty smooth, too. These bearing caps are line board in place when they manufacture the axle, so they need to go back in exactly the same way. There are marks on them, and there are corresponding marks under this gasket. I'm gonna leave that gasket on for now. I also took a picture of it just so I can make sure they go each one goes back in its place in the right orientation. You can't flip them around or anything. So these holes take a special tool to spread the case a little bit. I'm just using a reversed bar clamp to give it a little help. I'm just prying it out like everybody else does. Before I pull the pinion out, I want to get this thing wrapped up, sandblasted, and painted. This is just going to be the easiest time to seal up everything. I also pop the old U-joint bearings in the yoke just to protect the surfaces that they sit in. The rear axle is fairly similar to the front. I'm not going to show everything, show some of the differences, and anything that's 
interesting issues I run into. This is the first thing that's interesting. It's really not supposed to be loose. At least it's not rusted on. Of course, I need a set for the other side that's left-handed. I was gonna, you know, do some sort of gag with a mirror or flip the video or something, but it turned out I didn't have enough of the hex stock to make both in the same size, so that wouldn't have really worked, so just single-pointed it instead. Yeah, I did break off one stud taking the wheel off. I was turning it the proper direction. It's just old and rusty. That took some heating and some pounding and lots of ugga duggas, but it came off. Before I pull this apart, I want to check the end play, do a little bit of inspection on it. Looks like it's about nine, maybe ten thousandths if I push really hard. I've got a clamp here to bind up the pinion and an indicator on the ring gear. I'm going to call that about six thousandths, which is on the low end of spec. Looking pretty good. You got the brake plates, shims pulled off, everything's as crusty as you can think. The grease seal is pretty much gone. Wasn't really doing anything. These have a little hole at the bottom. A little cap there has a little thing that goes over that, so when that grease seal does go, instead of coming into your brakes, it drains out the back. You can see that one was doing a pretty good job with it. I was pretty much prepared for a really good fight to get the axle out. This one just pulled out with my hands. See if I get lucky on this side. It would help if I took this bearing retainer plate off. Pulled the carrier out, did some little masking tape and cardboard block off plates, got all ready to go sandblast. Well, he's sandblasting those, let's take a look at what else we found. On the rear axle, the wheel bearings and races really aren't in bad shape. They look pretty good. There's a little bit of sort of chowdering on the taper here. Took a light stone and kind of went over that knocked down the high spots a bit. But I'm going to repack these and run them. We'll just keep these clean, set them aside for right now. The carrier bearings on the back end, same sort of story, really not too bad. I mean, you can see that there's some wear there. I don't really feel anything there. We're going to run it. The tiny spot of rust right there on just one tooth. So I think all the rear end really needs is some cleaning and some new seals. I guess that's to be expected. When I'm this old, I'm probably going to leak a bit too. The front axle is a different story. We saw this spindle. You can see how scored up that is. I thought about trying to bore that out, press a sleeve in, but 
I mean, that kind of holds the wheel on the thing, so that's done. The wheel bearings themselves don't look awful, but the races kind of tell a different story. You can see kind of some marks probably from where it was sitting. But then you get stuff like that that you can catch your fingernail on. So those are done. Kingpin bearings are probably the worst of it. You can actually just feel it with your finger, and I could even feel it turning back and forth. It was sort of almost like a little detent where it was straight. And the bearings are just crusty and broken. Carrier bearings, again, they look good, but the races, again, have some pitting. Quite a bit of visual wear in there. I can't really feel it, but you can definitely see it. And, you know, pits and some discoloration there. Those aren't long for this world. And the axle shafts pretty much just fell apart when I was pulling them out. Check out these grooves that are worn in. And this ball is pretty well trashed too. These will be fun to forge something out of. So, I was kind of hoping this video was going to be sort of triaging it, going through and seeing what actually needed to be replaced and what didn't, but turns out pretty much everything on the front axle needs to be replaced. So, I'm going to go order some parts, do some painting, and hopefully get this thing back together next time. If you want to see that, stick around.